So from Freedom Kids to the host team, worship and media teams to our evangelism team, Project Exodus Task, Connect Group leaders, trio leaders, Bible school, the staff, elders, everybody. They give of themselves for the love of their King Jesus and those he's called them to love and serve. And I want to say to you, we are not the same when you are not here. The enemy might want to tell you, oh, they don't need you. They don't notice you. You shouldn't bother coming. Get on with your life. Go do something else. Find another group of people. I want to tell you, we are not the same when you are not here. Because serving is not just about what you do. It is about who you are and who you are becoming. It's easy to thank someone for the hours they've put in and the skills they've used. But when we honor people, we acknowledge the heart behind their actions. And so we honor you today because you've served because you love Jesus and you love his people. You love his house. And you love what God's doing in the earth. And for that, we are grateful. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes, about 15, if that's possible, um, just to share a few things. And then we're going to take an opportunity uh, to honor some of the people in this room this morning that have so faithfully served uh, in this house. So this morning we are having an honoring service um, to thank people and so I want to just say this morning Karina and I are extremely extremely grateful to this amazing house it, it is an absolute privilege to serve this community uh, in the way that we get to as uh, pastors uh, in this community. Karina and I, <clears throat> well, yeah, I, I get to be the face in some ways of the leadership team, and it's a joke because the Lord gave me a face for radio, but I, I, I lead the team. But there are elders that lead this church, so it's not just myself and Karina, but Pat and Mandy, Gavin and Wendy for a large portion uh, of the last six years have helped us lead this community, and we're looking to add elders to our team uh, in the new year. But this church is led um, by elders. And we could never, ever do what God has called this community to do without you. It's just an impossibility. In fact, it was never God's plan uh, for people in their own individual capacity or power to do things for Him. God always expected for His people to be a family, a body, to come together as a community, as a company of believers to fulfill His plan and His purpose. And so I want to speak to you briefly about the beauty and the significance of faithful service in God's kingdom. Every one of us has a place in God's kingdom to serve Him. Every one of us has a responsibility to do so. And serving, serving isn't just about fulfilling tasks. It's not just about getting a job done. It's about embodying the heart of Jesus. It's about becoming like Jesus. It's about revealing Jesus. It's about showing up, not for recognition, but because we're called to love God and others through our actions. It is. So I want to tell you a story. During World War II, a group of soldiers uh, were tasked with burying their fallen comrades. They had, uh, had a whole lot of people or brothers in arms who were dead, and now they had to bury them. And a local farmer saw their struggle and offered his land uh, for a burial site. He said, come over here. You can bury these men uh, in my field. And one soldier asked him, why would you do this for people you don't even know? You don't even know these people. <laughs> you don't know if they're good or bad or if they've done evil or what, but you're just giving this, this opportunity. And the farmer replied, because it's the right thing to do and they are worth it. It's the right thing to do and they're worth it. The farmer's service wasn't about obligation. It was about honoring the worth of others, even strangers. You see, this story il illustrates the core of faithful service, the heart of what it means to serve faithfully. Not just doing for the sake of doing, but serving because we value people deeply, and so does God. The scriptures are clear that we love Jesus, we show our love for Jesus by loving one another. That actually, you and I cannot make the claim, oh, I love the Lord but I treat my brother with disdain or disrespect or dishonor. God says, oh, no, no. So the Bible tells us that if you have a gift for the Lord, you're bringing it to the Lord and, and you're, you're at the altar, but I have a problem, you have a problem with your brother or your sister in the Lord, the Bible says, leave your gift there. 
God says, I have every intention to receive that gift from you and bless you and walk with you and love you, but I want you to leave that gift there and I want you to go and be made right with your brother. You see, God's desire is for us to see one another the way that he sees us. And I want to tell you, serving helps us do that. And here at Cedar Hill Church, we have a group of selfless, faithfully devoted volunteers that week in and week out make everything here work. <laughs> everything here worked. This morning we came in and nothing worked. I'm just teasing. Karadis got you and ProPresenter, which is the thing that helps us put the, the, wor the words up and run videos and all that kind of thing. You know, it wasn't working. And he, and he told me and I was like, oh, I'm sure I saw an email about that. <laughs> and so I was like, found the email, I sent it to him and then he fixed it. But if it was just me, we would have been in trouble. Because it's people like Herodotus and others that help facilitate everything that takes place here. Like I said, I just get to be the face. <laughs> but it's not me. It's certainly not Kareem. And those that serve, they, they live this value out. They really do. Not just doing for the sake of doing, but serving because they value people. They value you and they love their God. So from Freedom Kids to the host team, worship and media teams, to our evangelism team, Project Exodus Task, Connect Group leaders, trio leaders, Bible school, the staff, elders, everybody. They give of themselves for the love of their King Jesus and those He's called them to love and serve. And we want to celebrate you today. And we want to say thank you. Now, my thanks is not going to be nearly good enough. It's not going to be in direct proportion to your serving because only Jesus can repay you at the end of time. <laughs> you know, I, I, I see Nathan sitting over there. And he's, Nathan's dressed up today. He normally has shorts on. I'm just teasing him. But Nathan sits with people, counseling people all over the place. Oftentimes for free, just trying to help people that are stuck in addiction. Herodotus gives of his time in the same way they help at Project Exodus. There is no ways that we can repay him for what he's done or the people that serve. But God promises to reward you. And one day when you step into eternity, not just for serving in the local church, but our serving is beyond that, but just this morning we're dealing with that. He will be faithful to you, and we're going to look at that in a moment. So I just want to read the scripture to you in Philippians 1, verses 3 to 5. It says, and when I read it, I think of you as the church. I think of you, and I go, it says, I thank my God every time I remember you. Now, I will be honest, there are moments where I remember some of you, and no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> but when I remember this church and I remember all that God is doing here, I just, it's, I give Him thanks. I do. I say, thank you, Jesus. So in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. I do. Even when it's hard. Even when we're going through difficult things. Because if it's not good, God's not done. And God's plan in this community is to mature all of us, to strengthen all of us, to, to grow all of us up so that we might be like Jesus. And so if we're not quite like Jesus yet, He's not done. And so we don't disqualify one another, dishonor one another, we cheer each other on. And serving gets to do that. So because of your partnership in the gospel from, from the first day until now, thank you for serving for the sake of the gospel. Thank you that we get to be partners for the sake of the gospel. So... I've got a couple of points. The first one is serving like Jesus. In, in Mark chapter 10 and verse 45, it says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. I read a quote the other day. I think I might have shared it with some of you. Uh, it said this. It, basically, it says, um, If you can't hold a mop, you can't hold a microphone. And it's just talking to the heart of serving. Our King, King Jesus, who rules and reigns over all things, who created all things. I mean, when he was here as a man, he, he took two fish and five loaves and fed like thousands. Who would love that gift as a mom? Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Some of you love cooking. But the, the reality is he did some glorious and wonderful things. He was spectacular in the way that he served. But he served as a man. He gave up uh, the right to be God in all his glory. Humbled himself as a man to serve you and I. He didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom. And Jesus in that models for you and I the best possible way to live our lives. In the service of others. For his glory and his purpose. Jesus didn't come uh, with a crown 
demanding service. He came with a towel, washing feet. His service was selfless and sacrificial and rooted in love and humanity, humility and grace. Can you imagine uh, a CEO? I, I love listening to the stories of you know, business people. I love watching uh, stories about people's lives and those kinds of things. And, and there are some CEOs that are really wealthy. Maybe uh, one of them who's maybe quite present in our mind and I thinking because of the news, Elon Musk, a fellow South African. Can you imagine Elon Musk, who I think is worth something like $150 billion or $170 billion. Can you imagine every day he arrived at work and the first thing he did was he went from floor to floor cleaning all of the toilets before he began his duties as a CEO. We go, oh, that's not the CEO's job. But essentially, that's what Jesus did. Don't want to dishonor him with that title, but he's the boss. He's the CEO. <laughs> and he came to serve every single one of us with grace and kindness. And so as we serve in the church, whether in children's ministry or worship, hospitality, or behind the scenes, we all reflect Christ's humility, Jesus' humility. Our service, no matter how unseen, is a mirror of his love. It doesn't matter how big or small your service is, it reflects the glory of his love to one another. And it's a powerful, powerful thing. So the difference between uh, appreciation and honor. I was just reading some things this week. Appreciating a volunteer is valuing what they do. And we appreciate you because we do value what you do. We're grateful for what you do. But honoring you is valuing who you are. <laughs> There's a difference. And so we want to both appreciate you to do today and to honor you. We want to say thank you for what you do. We appreciate what you do. We wouldn't be able to do it without you, but we also value who you are. We love you. We love that you are here. We love that you add that special um, thing about who you are. Uh, I was reading a story about C.S. Lewis, and he would sit every Wednesday, if I remember correctly, and he would sit with two friends, and they were also uh, professors, and they were also involved in, in literature and writing and all those kinds of things. And every week they would sit and they would talk about what they were writing, but they would talk about their love for the Lord, and they would talk about the Lord. And I can't remember exactly, but C.S. Lewis says, one of these men died. And this person passed away, and he mourned this, this friend, but he thought to himself, you know what? As a kind of an encouragement to himself, he thought, you know what? Now I get to enjoy my other friend by myself. I can, I can enjoy him the most. I can love him, and we can become the best of friends you know, because this other person is not here. We mourn them. I didn't want them to go, but now I can, so to encourage himself, I said, I'm going to love this one person. But over time, do you know what C.S. Lewis said? He said, it was wonderful to be with my friend, but he said, there was something in my friend who passed away, something of the wonder of God, something of the personality of God that we now missed. And we could no longer experience because they were not here. And he missed his friend all the more. And I want to say to you, we are not the same when you are not here. The enemy might want to tell you, oh, they don't need you. They don't notice you. You shouldn't bother coming. Get on with your life. Go do something else. Find another group of people. I want to tell you, we are not the same when you are not here. There are friendships and connections that God is beginning, uh, causing to happen in this place because it changes us. Because serving is not just about what you do. It is about who you are and who you are becoming. It's easy to thank someone for the hours they've put in and the skills they've used, but when we honor people, we acknowledge the heart behind their actions. And so we honor you today because you've served, because you love Jesus and you love his people. You love his house and you love what God's doing in the earth. And for that, we are grateful. In Romans 12, 10, it says this, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Uh, part of the host team duty when they come to church on a Sunday morning is that they uh, sort out the toilets. And it's not the funnest job to do for those that are on that host team because sometimes we arrive and those toilets are not um, as clean as they should be and they don't smell possibly like they should. But nobody's ever complained. Not one of the, I don't know how many people on that host team, there's a lot of them, have ever come to me and said, you know, Pastor, really? You come here in your fancy shoes every Sunday and you, you don't even bother going to the toilet, you know, but I'm in there. No, no one's ever said that to me. Maybe they've wanted to, I don't know. If you do, I apologize. Maybe we can have a conversation afterwards. But people just come and serve and they love it. I've been in there to try and mop the floor. Man, I get manhandled by some of those ladies. They're like, get out of here, Pastor. Give me that mop. I'm doing this, you know. 
But they treat others. They honor people. <laughs> it's beautiful. So at Cedar Hill, our volunteers are the lifeblood of our ministry. They really are. But today I want you to know, we don't just appreciate the work that you do. We honor you as people created in God's image, uniquely gifted and called for His purpose. I want you to know that if you weren't here, we would not be the same. And we are grateful for you. Rewards of faithful service. I wish I was rich as Oprah and I could say to you this morning, look under your seats. There's a car for you and you and you and you. I wish I could do that. <laughs> but there's nothing under your seat. I'm just going to clear. I'm just going to clear that up for you. <laughs> but I do want to say to you that one day when you step into glory, one day when you stand face to face to the king, the one who is able to honor you and to reward you will. And what he will give to you will never be stolen. It will not rust. It will not fade away. But it will be an eternal glory to you. In the book of Revelation, there's a picture of uh, leaders, elders who have crowns. And instead of basking in the glory of that crown, they throw it at the feet of Jesus in an act of worship and honor. I want to say to you, God will reward you and He will reward you faithfully. And He will reward you in a way that no man on this earth ever could. But even when He does reward you, the true reward will be Him. It'll be to be with Him. To sense your worth and to feel the full might of His love. It will undo us for all of eternity. Matthew 25, 21 says, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. I want to say to you, we, we qualify for great things in God by doing little things well. By doing them faithfully for His glory. When we serve, we, we're not seeking earthly rewards, but eternal, eternal ones. God sees every act of service, no matter how small the promise to re, He promises to reward us. I was thinking about a gardener. Not that I'm a great gardener. We drove out every day. I'm like, we've got to water those plants. We have to, because they're all dying. But I need to do that. But, but that's besides the point. If you think about a gardener planting seeds, at first the work is tedious. Anybody done some gardening? It's dirty. It's messy. It's, yeah, it's a thing. And then there's no visible fruit. You put seed in the ground, but over time those seeds grow into a, a lush garden, a beautiful garden. You see, your service is like that. You may not always see immediate results. You, know, you may not be thanked immediately. In fact, maybe nobody sees you and nobody thanks you. But God is growing something beautiful in and through you and through your faithfulness. God sees. Every act of kindness, every good thing, every faithful promise you keep to the Lord, every way you serve, God sees. Nothing produces faithfulness in our lives besides yielding in obedience to God's word. Nothing produces fruitfulness and faithfulness in our lives like serving. <laughs> it's a thing. You know, uh, I've served in the church a long time. And one thing that I can say I've learned in, in serving, I've learned to not be offended. I've learned not to give up on God because people have given up on me. I've, I've learned in serving that God is faithful to me and good to me regardless of what other people see. I want to say to you, people sometimes don't thank you or see you or reward you or even say a kind word to you because most of the time they're not thinking about you, they're thinking about themselves. And that's true of all of us. And so if you are not thanked or not loved or not honored, don't get offended. Don't be frustrated. Just to remind yourself, the one who will reward you never doesn't see. And he will honestly reward you faithfully. So, uh, one more thing and then we're nearly done. But it, 
Peter 4.10, it says this, Each of you should use whatever gift you receive to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So, so the Bible says that each one of you has a gift. <laughs> and what you should do with that gift, like we were speaking about in the tithe and offering message, is to serve. I use this example because I can and it's close to home. My wife is a worship leader and she sings here at church. She's been in a worship team since she was 16 years old. Hey, sweetheart, about 16, 17 and Corn and I have been married for 19, nearly 20 years coming up. And I have never once in those 19 years of marriage got up in the morning and found my wife singing to herself in front of the mirror. Never. I've never seen her just looking at herself in the mirror and just singing and just going, oh, you are just the most gorgeous thing. Look how beautiful you sound. Oh, and just... And just happy about this wonderful gift she has she doesn't in fact most of the times and all of these musicians we pray for them but they have the same problem they never think it's good enough but it's good it's always great Vix, it's wonderful but they serve <laughs> they serve you the gift that god's given to your life is often not for you but for others use it use it the gift that he's placed in, in your life, the talent that he's placed in your life is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift back to God and your gift back to, to others. So, as we celebrate and honor our volunteers today, so we're celebrating you, saying thank you for what you do, but we're honoring you for who you are. I want to remind us all that serving isn't just about doing, it's about becoming. It's about becoming more like Jesus, the one who set the example for us, who served with humility, love, and faithfulness. That's what Jesus modeled to each of us. Cedar Hill Church, I want to ask you, let's continue to serve. Not out of obligation, but out of love for God and for others. Let's honor one another, valuing not just what we do, but who we are in Christ. Let's value each other for being brothers and sisters, family in Jesus. And let's hold on to the promise that our faithfulness will be rewarded. One day, when we stand face to face with the King, He will reward us both now and in eternity. I want to end with the scripture. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. As working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. May we all serve faithfully with hearts full of gratitude and love for the one who first loved us. That's Colossians 3. So, as I conclude, thank you for helping. This year, our host team has welcomed and loved on and handed out gifts to 147 visitors. It's been amazing. We've baptized, uh, and I know we've baptized more, I just couldn't find all, but we've baptized over 32 people this year as they profess faith in Jesus and following Jesus. We've seen dozens of salvations in church and on the streets. We have an evangelism team who's out there sharing the gospel at every opportunity they, that they get. We have served many meals to the homeless through task. We've hosted conferences for marriages and prophetic conferences. We've done all kinds of things. And, and the, the list can go on and on. We've had ladies' events. And it's all happened because of you. Because you've served faithfully. Freedomkins, host team, worship team, media team, task, the evangelism team, Bible school, connect groups, trio leaders, the finance team, elders, everybody that's involved, thank you. All these teams serve tirelessly. They serve this community ensuring everything runs as smoothly as it can. I want to take a moment and pray. Let's pray. <laughs> oh.
church, mother in a church had it clap, man, that sugar gave her color purple, coming back, clap, uh, when that whole week beat you up and stretch you, but you hear that organ playing, and remind you of your blessings, and I another note, she just had another note, she was lost, I got me crying, put me over long, we don't know about it, no, I was going to church, and I'm sick as hell, I'm in mean, that drum, and I'm first in, oh, Lord, 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 can't you hear me now, church close, where they don't care, you just Awesome. Thank you, guys. You were amazing. <laughs> Just waiting for Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> Cool. So, um, Pastor Wesley has already preached, so I don't, I don't want to preach more. <laughs> but um, there are some very important things that I just wanted to mention before thanking all of our volunteers. So, um, a study that was done in 2021 um, by Ministry to Children, it was a salvation survey. And uh, what it boils down to is that 68.9% of Christians have been saved between the ages of 7 and 19. Okay. That being said, um, I really, really, uh, when I think of Freedom Kids, when I think of how f far God has brought us, there's one quote that has spearheaded my heart towards Freedom Kids. Um, so if you can put the quote up, that would be great. It's a quote by Steve Chang, and it says, one of the biggest mistakes I've seen among those who have a heart for the lost is that they don't see the children in their own church as lost. Every child, even the cute ones, in our Sunday schools need the gospel. Our goal is not just to get the children into church, but into Christ. So if the church is to be missional, let's be missional with those closest to us, the ones already within the church walls. And so many times I think children go unnoticed because oh, we're always trying to keep them quiet or they're fidgety and we want them to sit still and pay attention. 
And uh, the reality is, these are our children. And um, if we don't teach them, and if we don't teach them how to, how to live a life in Christ, how to have a relationship with Christ, um, then we are losing out on a lot of Christians, a lot of people, a lot of people God wants to see in the kingdom. So I'm done, uh, I'm done preaching. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to the volunteers for helping with the dance. Thank you to each and every kid, even though you might feel like, oh, I'm too old for this now. You're, you're, you're so appreciated, and um, you guys did amazing. And so I'd like to just call up all the Freedom Kids volunteers by name, um, just to collect a little gift of appreciation and thanks. Uh, so I'm going to call your name. If you can just make your way to the front. Uh, okay, wait. One thing we love to do at City Hill is change plans. <laughs> so um, we're going to just change that plan. Maybe don't come to the front. We're going to call you afterwards and take one big group picture. Um, but I'm going to call out your name just to thank you so that everybody knows who's part of um, Freedom Kids. Maybe you can stand up so people can see you. Okay, so firstly, we have the beautiful Londeka Gumede. Please uh, stand. Um, there's a lot of names, so I don't know if you want to clap after each name. <laughs> Maybe when everyone's done. Okay, cool. Then we have... Uh, yes. Then we have Daniel Bridgelow. We have Charlotte Lovegrove, we have Jackie Govender, we have Janelle Maestri, we have Charlene Govender, Kadeen, I don't know your surname. <laughs> we have Lauren, Romaine, Salvi, Auntie Salvi, uh, Valencia, Hannah, my, myself, um, Anda, Inga, Zizo, Andiswa, Dimple, Erin Govender, Erin Pulvinas, Nomkrebo, uh, Lupawo, Tumi, Yandiswa, Kumo, Kiara, Lilo, and Talia Govinda. That is a lot of names. <laughs> that is a lot of names. And so I just also want to quickly testify of the fact that I think it was maybe two years ago now um, that. I got tasked with Freedom Kids, <laughs> and uh, I was going, Lord, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> I have no idea where to start or, or anything. And there was only a handful of volunteers who were working almost tirelessly every Sunday or every second Sunday, and we had to be there every Sunday because we didn't have volunteers. And so today is just also a testimony of prayer, of just going before God and saying, listen, we need volunteers. And he just started sending them like crazy. Um, and so all of that to say thank you, to God be the glory, and we are trusting him for more. Awesome. So in the tradition of changed plans. <laughs> there is just a little video we want you to watch in celebration of some of our volunteers. Hi, I'm Robin. Uh, I serve in three places. <laughs> Host team, media team, and task. I am the photographer. You can take a picture of you. <laughs> My name is Vix, AKA Vikesh. I serve on the worship team mainly, but I'm also a connect group leader. My name is Butle, short for Butle Benkosi. My name is Barney van Wyk. Uh, I'm one of the younger members of CDL Church. I'm serving at Task. Hi, my name is Nathan Wells. I'm a volunteer and facilitator at Toti Recovery Group. I serve in the most exciting place in church, at the sound desk, at um, camera and uh, pro presenter, and I'm learning our, our device we're calling BM right now. <laughs> and that's not Muslim Flugu. <laughs> My name is Romaine and I serve at Freedom Kids. 
My name is Janelle and I serve at Freedom Kids. So I believe we are all called to serve. And I love being with the kids. I love their innocence. I love teaching them. So I do enjoy serving and I serve because I know that this is where God has called me to be and he has placed me here to serve the kids. Yeah, it's my passion, it's my love for children that got me into this ministry and it's a, it's a blessing to be with little children and to help them grow. Hi, my name is Bongani Nala. Uh, I'm currently serving on the host team. So my name is Richard. I serve in being part of the praise and worship team, um, a bit of coordinating. We also run a connect group from home. And I'm Vanessa. I've been part of the staff uh, I also serve as a connect group leader um, and I serve at TAS. I like to be in the background. Um, I don't want to be in your face. I like to be behind the scenes, just doing the little things that sometimes people don't observe and notice. I serve because the pastoral position was already taken. My journey of serving has actually taught me uh, that when people of God are together and me being part of serving them, I'm actually serving Christ himself. I serve because I believe in putting action to your faith. Um, I believe Christ came to serve the least, even though he was the greatest. And I'm just mirroring his actions, his behavior. My reason behind task is the fact that if I'm driving around in the streets, I notice that these people that's standing and begging, and you always wonder, do these people have enough to eat? Do they have something in their tummies? And hence me then reaching out in a way that I know that will help them. And that's our task team, which is Tauti Area Soup Kitchen. I serve because I have a heart for people. I just love to be able to show people the heart of the Father. Why I serve is just to help other people come out of their issues and their problems to help guide them and teach them to overcome their addictions, problems that they may face in life and help equip them to, to move forward in their relationship with Jesus. I thoroughly enjoy the presence of God. Like, for me, there's no, there's no better feeling, there's no better moment than being in the presence of God and I worship because I, I really do delight in cultivating or being a part of cultivating that, that, that presence that he ushers in. Okay, cool memory moment. One moment that happens a lot of times, especially behind the pro presenter where us who are at the back here are connected with the worship team in the front there. We flow together even though we are separated there's just a oneness in our working together which produces such a beautiful moment that the congregation can experience and lift up a praise and worship to Jesus. The moment that that unity, that oneness produces in the congregation, ah man, ah, it's just, it's so, it's so pleasant, it's so nice. Every Sunday is, is a special or cool moment. I get to see like, you know, the spirit moving and working in the church. I also get to see everybody greeting each other and, you know, everyone having a nice time on Sunday mornings, all the extroverts being loud and greeting and high-fiving and hugging. I get to see all of that from very different perspectives, very different views. So I think just every Sunday, being able to see the worship team um, being anointed, being able to see people being touched by the Spirit, it's just every Sunday is a cool moment for me. And the coolest memory um, is about seeing the people of God experiencing the presence of God. It's actually something that happens every Sunday. Every time I see people in worship experiencing different things in their lives and uh, with me being part of enabling that environment, uh, you know, having, making people feel loved and, and, and you know, feeling uh, more secure to be in the space, you know, for me, it's really touching. In, in Connect, we've, we've really experienced uh, uh, the presence of God, answered prayers, miracles that have happened in, in Connect. And if I had to change anything in Connect, I actually wouldn't. 
uh, we get together because we love Jesus, we all love Jesus and we all have a passion and a desire for Him. We were teaching them on Jesus and redemption and why Jesus came and um, He came to save us and why He came to save us because He loves us and one of the kids, to we played this little game and one of the kids told me I made them stand on a bench and fall and they said you love me isn't I said yes like Jesus loves me I said yes and they just threw themselves into my arms without fear without hesitation and that's something I'll never forget because that's how we need to be with Jesus it was a recent one <laughs> I was serving on the media team <laughs> and my mind had gone into its own little place and Cat Harders bumped me and said to me, you need to change the camera angle or do something like that. I forget now. <laughs> okay, so the one week in Sunday school, we were doing uh, the story about Solomon. And the one kid picks up his hands and he goes, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. And I'm like, yes. He goes, I want to be like Solomon. And I'm like, okay, so you want wisdom like Solomon? And he goes, no, ma'am, I want 15 wives like Solomon. <laughs> So that was my coolest and he's like I can manage this so yes that's one of my coolest uh, memories with the kids. Alrighty so we are going to just take a moment um, and uh, we're going to call up um, our worship teams and all the teams to come up. We just have a gift we want to thank them with and we just uh, yeah, want to have a big photo with them but we also as a congregation want to honor them today. And so each one of the staff members is going to read out uh, the, pers the people that um, need to come up and uh, if you could just come up and if we could hold our applause to the, to the end. But could we have the Freedom Kids team come up so long? Would you come up? Just because we've already called you up and we are so grateful for you and we just we honestly give God glory for you. So thank you so much. Can we maybe just get gifts for them? For them? I know this will um, seem like a prize giving and uh, it'll take a little bit of time, but please just bear with us. We really feel like it's an important thing uh, to honor everybody. And... Um, Thank you. Alrighty. So, uh, <laughs> all right, we're just making sure. <laughs> yeah, it's for Lauren. Yeah. Come on. It's for Lauren's gift. Alrighty, so I'm going to ask, when we call you up, maybe what you can do is just come along the bottom here and just come up these stairs so we can give you a gift and then we'll place you uh, on the stage. So is that okay, everybody, that if your name gets read up, just come up, come to this side and then we'll be able to hand you a gift as you come up on the stage. And then the Freedom Kids people, we, do you want to be in the front? Let's get, because you, no, no, okay, we're going to just, so as people get on, you're going to have to go a little further back, but we'll get them on. So Cor's going to read up some names and then the rest of the stuff. So go for it. <laughs> we had this it's chat. Really, really <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
Come on, David. And it gets, it gets tough just as you do it on the screen. <laughs> and um, sometimes it's, you know, it's stressful at times at that, but we do know each other a lot behind there. <laughs> so David, Patrick, Carl, the one who's Charles is going to call me, and Lisa, and Bali, Hope, Dylan, Quibby, Robin, and then Bushle. Bushle. Come on. And I just want to say praise for our that who is also served behind the desk there as well. So we just want to say thank you for our media team. Righty. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Sarah, you're up. So I just asked all of our staff to call out all the names just so that we could honor you guys. And so, oh, you bought your list. Nice. Well done. He's dressed up. Alrighty. Only one mic. Only one. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'll use this one. <laughs> Thank you, Kuni. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, I get the privilege of just um, honoring some people too. And um, Alrighty, so um, we have a Project Exodus that happens on a Monday evening, and, and at Project Exodus, um, they serve this community, but they serve a broader community, they serve a Manzim Toti, and uh, they have uh, people that come that are struggling with addiction, and uh, they've seen some wonderful breakthrough, and it's an amazing, amazing ministry, a necessary ministry that we really thank the Lord for. And I know Gerardus is up on the stage already, but thank you, G, for what you do there. Um, but also uh, to Nathan, Nathan Wells, who leads that with Gerardus. And we also want to call up Mr. Brian Taylor. Is Brian here this morning? Brian helps serve, and he sets up the coffee, and he does all those kinds of things, and he, he does so faithfully. Brian, thank you so much. And so come and grab your gift. Come and stand up on the stage. And then I also want to uh, call up some of our Connect Group leaders. Some of them are already up. Um, and some of them are far away. So Anne Butler, I know Anne is not here at the moment, um, and she is away in the UK. But I know that Hetty, who else has been helping lead that team? Is, is Hetty here this morning? Yeah, well, won't you just come up and just grab that for, uh, for, um, for Anne? We appreciate that. Uh, then there's loads of other people up here, so we've taken names off. But there's Richard and Vanessa, there's Vikesh and Sarah, and some other people. But we also wanted to honor uh, Peter and Elza. And so if they want to come up, please, my in-laws. I have a lot to thank you for. <laughs> they live across the road. They've spent hundreds of hours looking after my children. 
for which I am grateful. And, um, but, all right. And then on TV, you're up next. There's no one, let me just press the, get the green button. <laughs> I have an awesome sermon this morning of thanking all those that have served on our Tosi area soup kitchen, which is known as Park. Um, firstly, I just want to thank Barney from the day. Where are you, Barney? Well. Ah, you did. Thank you so much for all the hours that you have put in for being there to lead the team and help us navigate some times, uh, you know, every Saturday. We really appreciate all the help and, yeah, well done to you. <laughs> and the rest of the people that have come tirelessly to serve the poor or the less fortunate in our community on a Saturday morning, sacrificing their time, uh, sacrificing their money, sacrificing their talents in cooking. Yeah, trust me, guys, that other people. Um, <laughs> we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. We really appreciate each one of you. And as I saw your name, you can just come to the front. It's Anne Rubin, Antoinette, uh, Antoinette Brenda Archie, Manuel Navish, Ransaraj, Rakima and Nivesh. Uh, Chantal and Sarah, Robin, who's already up here, Cynthia Jali, who's already here. We just want to say thank you guys. We really appreciate everything that you've done for us. Um, oh, um, also, Dallin, thank you. Awesome. Alrighty. Then, <clears throat> I just want to take a moment to honor a, a few more people. They're, some of them are, well, I think all of them are up on the stage already. So, I, I just wanted to say this. So, um, where's Brian Scott? Where's there, Brian? So, Brian, uh, we're calling him up. He's part of our host team. But, our, but we're going to take a moment just to uh, just kind of highlight him a little bit. And just to say... We, Brian is one of those people who is always here, and there's lots of them. But we've seen him grow in his spiritual life. He is a part of so much. He serves in so many ways. And I want to say to you, when I see Brian, I think of God's plan for our life. That he knits us into a family where we can be loved and love. Where we can work through uh, the things of life and so it's a real honor to have all of these beautiful people, people like Brian, who serve faithfully for no reward, no thanksgiving. But when I look at Brian, I see a life radically changed because of the gospel. Brian, you were invited to church by a fishing buddy, hey? Yeah. And they've moved on, they've gone overseas, but you're still at church because God has a plan. And part of that plan in changing his life was not just to be here, but to serve here. And so we're grateful to you and to every single person who serves, because our lives are radically changed by that. And so thank you, Brian. We just thought we'll um, make you feel so awkward. I know, hey. He's like... <laughs> oh, no. All right. Then, uh, Sammy. Where's Sammy? Sammy is our photographer and our lead actress. Yeah, it's, no, I'm just teasing. But Sammy, won't you come up? We certainly appreciate you. Thank you so very much. Uh, and then just two groups of people left to honor. Um, so, Patrick and Mandy, you are huddled in here somewhere. 
But Patrick and Mandy um, are serving on eldership with myself and Cor. And I want to say thank you to you guys, especially. Uh, we honor you as elders. I know that we were a team until a few months ago when Gavin and Wendy decided they had better things to do with their life than serve on the eldership team. And, uh, and they sent their apologies. They were going to be here this morning. But Wendy is matric marking. So she's marking through thousands of Afrikaans papers. Who remembers writing an Afrikaans paper? Yes. I think that the markers were disparaging towards me. But anyway, um, but she's away marking and, and Gavin's away this weekend, so they send their love. But I just want to say to you, thank you so much for your love, for your friendship, uh, for the good times of connecting and a good coffee and cake. Eh? We love cake. And it's, uh, but thank you so much for everything that you do. They carry such a heart for you. Their prayerfulness, their faithfulness, their love for people. And it's such an encouraging thing to have them on team. And then lastly, to our staff. Vanessa, don't step back. It's still time to shine now. <laughs> so, but I, I am the rose amongst thorns, and uh, I am the only male on staff. But, uh, but, so, but to our staff, so to Sarah, to Vanessa, to Sharice, and to my wife, Corinne, who sometimes forgets I'm the boss. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but I do want to say to you, thank you so much. Where is Sharice? Where? Here come again. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So I do want to say to, to you guys as staff, I really appreciate everything that you do. I know that um, I know sometimes you leave here thinking, Lord, why did you give that man to us? Yeah, this is painful. We do. I appreciate all the extra hours you put in. I appreciate your good ideas. I appreciate you dealing with my bad ideas. Um, but I really do. I'm grateful to God for this amazing team. For everybody on the stage, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We could in no ways do what we do here at Cedar Hill without your help. And it is such an overwhelming privilege to look up at you today on this stage and see all of your beautiful faces. And know, I know, all of you serve so faithfully, so diligently, with so much love and care. And so we say thank you to King Jesus for you, but we say a big thank you to you, to you for all that you do. So ladies and gentlemen, can we just honor these beautiful people and just celebrate them and say a big thank you. So guys, please just stand up as we honor Pastor Wesley yes. and Corrine no. <laughs> for Vanessa. leading this team and leading this community of believers. Mm. Because we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Come for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Lord. Thank you for so I told them we don't get anything today because this is about honoring everybody else. But we appreciate it, Vanessa. And we are so grateful. I appreciate your kindness. But again, thank you to everybody. So with one last big round of applause, let's honor them as they take their seats. But thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Alrighty. So. I did say that we were going to get out here by 10. But I have one, uh, one more video to show. Gee, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask you for just seven more minutes. We have uh, Herodis uh, created a little video for our Project Exodus. And I want to show you this video just quickly. And, and so please, if you can, because I want to say to you, one of the things about a moment like this with a stage full of people who are serving and a hall nearly full of other people applauding, is that we can have what we call the bystander effect. So those sitting in the chairs can say, look at that, they don't need any help. <laughs> They've got so many people serving, they don't need my help at all. But I want to say to you, we do. Because there's so many other things that we still need to do. There's so many other things that we want to achieve and do for God. And so we need your help, and we want to ask you, please, to come and help and serve. And so I want to show you just one aspect of what happens, because some people have made their lives available to do Project Exodus and have helped people journey through healing from addiction and emotional stuff and all that kind of thing. So it's about seven minutes. Could we watch it? And I will pray and send you home for a long lunch. Is that okay?
fantastic. So my name is Gerardus van den Berg and Nathan Wells and I run the Addiction Recovery Group Project Exodus here uh, every Monday night at City Hill. Recovery Group exists to create a safe environment for people to come with whatever their issues are, whatever their struggles are, whether they're addictions, whether it's uh, behavioral issues. They can come to a space where they can just be themselves and they can share and they can be real. For me, I was addicted to pornography for 10 years of my life and I was trying to do it alone and here and there I asked for help but no one was there to help me, no one knew how to help me and for a long time I struggled with that addiction and when I got into a space like Project X and into a group, I met people that accepted me the way that I was, I met people that had the tools to help me and I was able to deal with deep rooted issues that was in my life. I was able to deal with the way that I looked at myself, my relationship with myself, my relationship with God and with people. And there was so much restoration and so much growth. You're gonna be seeing videos from members of the group that have been coming. Many of them have been coming for most of the year, um, last year, and they're just sharing how they have grown and what they have seen. Many of them do not share in detail what their struggles are or the reasons for coming to group, and that is perfectly fine because group is a confidential space. Group is a safe space, and they have shared what they feel comfortable to share. And so I want to encourage you that if you relate to anything that is said, or if you feel like the Holy Spirit is knocking on your heart and saying, I need to come to group, I need to come into this space, then I want to invite you to come through. I initially came to group because my boyfriend, now husband, suggested I needed to go because I was not coping very well with everything that he was going through and his addiction to pornography. And I was too scared to speak to anyone about it. When I felt so much discontentment and I was just not happy with my life, with myself, and I just felt so much void inside that I didn't understand because according to my vision, I felt like I was where I wanted to be, but I just felt like I have everything that I needed at that time, but I'm just unhappy. And I was like, I think I need help. I thought it was only for drug addicts and alcoholics, um, but then I came here and it helped me to realize that I'm not the only one with problems. So, yeah, it was pretty cool. Well, I was very intrigued because I didn't know who I was. So I was trying to find a sense of purpose and direction in my life. I needed to come for Project Exodus for someone whom I identified needed help. But when I attended training, I found out that I'm the one who needed help more than that person. One of the members from church invited me to a group and uh, never looked back. Best decision I've made so far. I don't think that I saw myself as someone who was struggling with something that could require for me to come to group. So I think that stigma and the fear of being vulnerable to people were some of the things that were like really stopping me from considering coming to group. I didn't want to go to group because I was afraid. I was dealing with a lot of shame and I felt like I didn't want anyone to know the truth about what I was going through, what um, my partner was going through, and I was afraid of how people would react if they did know. Oh, one of the obstacles was for me to be associated with recovery because I thought people might think that I'm an addict, I've got big problems of alcoholism, using drugs and all that. But I had to overcome that because the problems that were highlighted during training or outweighed the, the fear of being judged. So I decided to come. Not once have I been judged for, on, on what I've shared in the group. I have been given very good advice. Sometimes a bit painful to get through, but at the end of, it, at the, end of the day, well worth it. I think what's grown is basically my emotional well-being. It's given me lots of confidence and knowing who I am and how to deal with my emotions. So coming to group helped me to even realise that watching too many movies wasn't really good. I was trying to hide how I was feeling instead of facing, you know, how I was feeling. 
the realization that I can do it, I can get through life, I can get through the chaos in life without being led by my emotions. I believe that once my emotional state and my mental state has been balanced properly, it becomes easy for me to focus on some other areas like my spiritual life and my uh, relational life and my occupational life. So with the help of facilitators, they kind of like helped me to dig deep within to see what was wrong with me. And I was just so amazed about so many things that I went through I never really got to work like on. And I was like, okay, this is amazing. I wanna keep on coming and keep on discovering things that I need to work on. And I just, for the first time, I felt like, you know what, I'm free. You know, I still had to do a lot of work, but the awareness of where the discontentment came from, for me was a breakthrough. It seems scary at first, but it's really worth it. You can find a place where you're welcome and you're loved and you're supported and you're not alone. When I first heard about it, I thought that it's just, it wasn't gonna help me. But when I went there, realized the problems I have, and how much help and accountability I have, it just, it's very good for a person. If he's looking for a plan, that's the way to go, it's the group. We'll help you figure out what is wrong and where to from here, you know. We are a family that just want to grow and just serve Jesus with our best part, without having so many things that we need to worry about. It's not about how many problems we have, but about how much they can grow and I just know that this is an environment where you can grow and I've seen people grow in weird and wonderful ways and not because of any specific problem or issue but just because there's more in life that, that can be gained and conquered. If you look at yourself, honestly look at yourself, you'll know that there is a problem. So for someone who is not sure what the problem is, this is the place to come. This group will help you to figure out what is not in place in your life because it helps you to unpack the issues that you never even knew that they were there. So I'll encourage you to come. Awesome. So, <clears throat> as we close this morning, I, I want to just say this about Project Ex Exodus. The, the people in the video and other people that are involved, I have honestly seen some of the most tremendous growth in people's lives from being in that group. Just powerful change. Healing, restoration, just a radical change in people's lives. Because two people said, we'll give up our Monday nights and come and serve People that sometimes don't even know what their problems are. <laughs> like Mawili said, hey. But they've served. And it's made a difference in people's lives. And I want to say to you today, every one of you in this room has a talent and a gift and a skill set that God has purposed and designed so that you too, every one of you, young, old, in between, black, white, pink, green, doesn't matter. God has purposed you, designed you to make a difference in the kingdom of God. And as we close this morning, I want to ask you, what's burning in your heart? How can you serve? How can you help? How can you surrender your gifts, your talents, and the skills that God has placed in your hand so that others might come to know Jesus or grow or find healing or become who he designed them to be? Amen? Won't you stand with me this morning as we close in prayer? And this time, nobody is coming in for a flash mob. Well, I say, let's pray. <laughs> Well, let's pray. Father, thank you this morning for the wonderful joy of celebrating the beautiful people that serve in this house. We all collectively say thank you, Lord, that you've stirred the hearts of people to serve you and to serve your people, to love you and to love your people. And thank you, Lord, that we've seen growth and we've seen things happen and we've, things, we've seen amazing things. People get saved, people get baptized, people find healing and restoration in all kinds of ways because there are faithful men and women who in serving you have committed themselves to serve others. I speak your blessing and your grace and your favor upon your people. And I ask, Lord, would you stir the hearts of those that this morning, Lord, you are prodding and pushing to say, come on, you too, 
can make a difference in the lives of people. And we thank you for it, Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you for being with us, family. Have a wonderful God-filled rest of the week. And we'll see you next Sunday. <clears throat>